it's vengeance you seek, you'd rather put the bullet in him yourself. Then it's you in prison, and the ranch is lost all the same. As he recovers, his desire for revenge has overtaken him. And I guess it's what all countries face when they go to war. How much of this is aggression? How much if this is pure revenge? How much of this is a sense of self-preservation? I have to fight back, because if I don't fight back, I'm annihilated. Jacob Dutton is devoted to his family and their future, and really sees himself as an instrument of the preservation of that opportunity and freedom, and is not ready to pass on that obligation or authority to anybody else. I do it for the land. I do it for you, so that when you're laid to rest, no one builds a city over you. I think that's a lot of what our story is about. It's a love and a connection with the land, and obviously witnessing the destruction of the land. Oh, what is that? Cutting a road. Up the side of a mountain? You can't hold back modernization, but at the same time, the sacrifices that you're going to make in terms of nature maybe are too great. I know how much you've suffered. God damn it, it's their turn now. Who's conducting this interview? I am. What the hell does a woman know about law enforcement? The cool thing about my character, Sheriff McDowell, is I respect Kara and help her with this questioning of these prospective livestock agents. And I think by showing that I'm supporting her, she decides it might be smart to come to me and reveal all, which sets this whole other thing in motion. I have to show up and I have to say, hey dude, what you're doing is not cool. And I won't allow it. This cowboy justice is old school. We're gonna let the legal system run its course. That's civilized. You want some fucking proof? Give me some fucking proof! I think that was one of my favorite days on set, was getting to watch those two old school legends that are so great at what they do, go at it, toe to toe. I loved getting to be a spectator in that scene. Damn right I'm mad! When she's given these clothes, she hasn't seen or felt any other texture except for what she's been wearing for the last five or six years. To see clothing that is not a dress, that is warm, that fits nice, that too is keeping her going. She's like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do disguise. I might lower my voice a little bit. I'm gonna fucking get out of here. Much more kuga, ma alalo. At first, for her, it symbolizes the hatred that these people believe is accurate and true, and she doesn't want anything to do with it. And then Hank explained his reasoning of why. She's like, okay, you're my elder, and I'm gonna bury them. It is compassion. And it's so crazy to say that. There's no room to be angry anymore. <laughs> We are shooting episode six, all of the shipwreck scenes when the tugboat is overturned in Malta. Ah! We came here to use these beautiful tanks that they have. They've been used on tons and tons of movies. They're amazing. And we actually built the full-size tug to put in the large tank that's a deep tank so we could show Spencer's path. He has to dive back down and find Julia, who's trapped in these compartments below. <laughs> to prepare, we were in Montana for about a month taking swim training, where they just put us through breath-holding drills, and we would be swimming laps, and just trying to get strong in that way. It's a lot of psychological aspects of dealing with water that actors have to overcome more than the actual swimming and things. You have to make them feel absolutely safe in the environment, that they're in control of what's going on, so they're able to perform. So we have divers basically guiding them to their spots to make them feel safe. Right here. That's good. We have some great underwater photographers, and I think it's gonna look great, and it's gonna be challenging, but it's gonna all be worth it in the end. It's so funny because also at this point in our journey, it mirrors what they're going through, and we are exhausted, and to spend a week treading water in Malta, the performances will come very naturally. Spencer, Spencer. They've faced death in the scariest way thus far. And when Spencer and Alex are rescued, they're taken aboard this ship, and Spencer asks if the captain can marry them right then and there. 
For Spencer to immediately say, I do not want to live another second without this woman being my wife. It's this beautiful moment where the captain marries them, and it's really special. We love that scene. The favorite scene I've shot is just this very simple scene where we're just laying in bed talking to one another. There's something so lovely about it because it's one of the only times that they get that moment. It's kind of their honeymoon, essentially, and there's just something so wonderful about it. It's the most at peace they both are the safest they both feel. See, they don't get that. They're just constantly fighting against something. It's another hurdle just around the corner. I go where you 